Okay, hi guys. Welcome to Networking Wisdom's Keep It Pro training call featuring Ramazio Fulcher. Here you will learn skills to become successful in business and in life. My name is Meredith and I'm your host today. I have known Ramazio for about four years now. Over the years, he has been my mentor and we have also become great friends. It is an honor and a privilege that he has asked me to host this call today. I have extreme respect for him. He has allowed me to see him in action in every aspect of network marketing, and I've seen him firsthand apply his belief, vision, focus, and patience to achieve his goals. He has to be one of the most mentally strong men I've ever known. Even when others do not believe in him, he still pushes forward and comes out a winner. He has been in network marketing for over 10 years, and he has done over a billion dollars in sales. He has been ranked as the number 16th MLM income earner in the world, and he currently has 750,000 members in his network. Ramacio is a heart of gold and loves helping others. That is why he put this call together about four years ago, every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific. This man definitely has words of wisdom to share with you today, and if I were you, I'd find a quiet space and get a pen and paper ready to take notes because these calls can, are known to be life-changing. Without further ado, I give you Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. All righty. Thank you so much, Meredith. I appreciate you for stepping up and being the host of today's call. Guys, I am fired up for what we're getting ready to dive into today. And again, if you're joining for the very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're back again, we're glad to have you. But most of all, we definitely want you to share this with other people. As always, this call is done 4 o'clock on Sundays. It's always recorded, uploaded within 24 hours for you to re listen to at your leisure. The purpose of the call that we do every single Sunday, we teach you two specific things. Number one, the specific skills that you need to get yourself to the very top of whatever it is that you're promoting, whatever company that you're doing. Okay? And then number two, we teach you life skills. As we always say, as you grow as a person, so will everything around you grow. Your business, everything will, everything will change as you change. And so, guys, I'm really, really thrilled and excited to be back here with you again. Uh, I know that we've got a special call lined up for today. In fact, I've got uh, a special guest here that's joined in with us on the call here today that's going to chime in. And I'm looking forward to really, really diving into this particular topic. Uh, for those of you that are listening in, I want you to know that as we do this topic today, it's almost like I'm talking to myself. Uh, this is something that is so important, and specifically in the season that I'm in at the moment, this is something, this topic that we're talking about is very relative to me, very relative to me. I hope that you find the same, uh, I, hope you find, I hope that it resonates with you as well. Uh, because it's something that really, really, we're going to dive really deep in here today. So without any delay, guys, we're going to go ahead and kick this thing on off. I'm ready. I hope you are as well. So, guys, the theme of the call today are the series that we're starting. We're starting a series on patience. Patience. You know, we've all heard this word since we were, ch since we were uh, children. You know, I've heard it all my life. And, and, and as it relates to where we are today in the world, I want to really give you some context. It seems like when we, when we think of the word patience, we, we, we think of, for example, we know that there are young kids uh, patiently waiting to become adults, right? We know that someone out there is patiently waiting to get that phone call back and says, you've got the job. We know that that man or woman is out there patiently waiting for that Mr. or Mrs. Right, you know, engagement, being able to get married. We know that someone's out there patiently waiting to get pregnant. We know that someone's out there patiently waiting in the, food, in the fast food line as we speak, waiting on their food to be served. We know that someone's patiently waiting while they're standing in the grocery store right now. We know it just seems like everywhere we look, we're waiting on something. Everywhere we turn, we're waiting. You know, I know many minorities, specifically black folks, have been waiting in eternity to be able to get the world's ear about uh, social injustices. You know, I, I can just go on and on and on. It seems like we all are waiting on something. The businesswoman, the businessman, they're waiting on that deal to close. They're waiting on that promotion. We all are waiting on something. The sick person is waiting on the medicine to heal them. 
Spiritual people are waiting on Christ to come back. It seems like we all are waiting on something. And so I couldn't think of a better topic to really dive into than this topic of the word patience. Patience. Now, again, we all know, you know, the best things in life comes to those who wait. We got all of these slogans and things that we've heard about. But patience is something that's very, very important. And I'll be honest with you guys, nakedly honest, as always, patience is something that's extremely hard for me. It's extremely hard. It's something that is very, very hard for me. But just because it's hard doesn't mean I don't do it. It doesn't mean I, 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 it doesn't mean I don't, you know, go through the process. I don't have a choice. I have to go through it as well. You know, from a, from a, from a spiritual perspective, it seems like as humans, our natural self, we always want to get over there. We want to achieve and to conquer and to, to have and to do. We want things. We do. We all do. All of us. It's just, it's just normal. But from a spiritual perspective, you know, God talks about how we are spiritual beings that are having a human experience rather than us being human beings having a spiritual experience. And so with that being in mind, from a spiritual perspective, it's like we're on a journey. And God is constantly trying to teach and to reveal many different things to us. I mean, if you think about it, if everything happened the way that we envisioned, life kind of wouldn't be worth living. If everything went according to our plan, there would be no need for patience. There would be no need for faith. And so while many of us say, oh, yeah, 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 Ramacio, I understand that and I know that, but how do I really, really deal with patience? How do I, you know, how do I really, really deal with patience? Guys, this is super profound. I want you to think, whoever you are, wherever you're at in the world, as you hear my voice, what are you waiting for right now? What are you waiting on? Are you waiting on your Pop-Tart to pop up in the toaster? Are you waiting on your coffee to get hot in the microwave? What do you find yourself waiting on right now? Are you waiting on the pain that you're agonizing over to stop? We all are waiting on something. It's always something. Are you waiting on the check to clear? Are you waiting on Friday's paycheck to come? What are you waiting for? I want you to think about what are you waiting on. We all, myself included, we all are waiting on something. Everybody's waiting. Everybody's waiting. You know, I remember when I was a young fellow, man, I couldn't wait to be an adult. It seemed like it couldn't, it couldn't get here fast enough. I was always wanting to be like the big boys. And then when I became a big boy, I was waiting on something else. Then I wanted this. Then I wanted it. never stopped. We're always waiting on something. And so deep in my spirit, I felt that we needed to really, really start a series and talk about patience. And, again, this is the first of several calls that we're going to really dive deep into this because I don't just want you to hear from me on this topic. I want you to hear from several experts, several people that I highly respect in this, in, in this, in this topic because it's so, it's so, as I said earlier, it's so profound. It's something that it literally it lands on all of our doorsteps. We're always waiting on something. And what I'd like to do is share a few nuggets on this topic. And I like, if you know me, guys, I like to keep things fairly simple. And so what I'm going to share is, I can tell you this, one of the things that I truly believe is that the way you wait will determine how long you wait. Now, when I first learned this or heard this, it was a little confusing to me. What do you mean the way that I wait will determine how long I have to wait? I didn't understand that for several years when I first learned this. I certainly understand it now. Because you're going to wait. You're going to wait for your progress. You're going to wait for your promotion. You're going to wait for Mr. and Mrs. Wright. You're going to wait for the baby to come forward. You're going to wait. There's no getting around time. The way God set everything up, he said the whole world 
runs on seed, time, and harvest. What does that mean? You know what a seed is. A seed is a little bitty thing, right? And the harvest is something that's big, plentiful. It, 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 it's the way God set it up. Everything, everything, your money, everything, your honey, everything, everything runs on seed, time, and harvest. I want you to write that down, whoever you are. You need to understand this. Everything. This is how it works. So if we know that everything runs on seed time and harvest time, seed time and harvest time. I love when the old folks, I love when the old folks say, the way you wait will determine how long you wait. The way you wait will determine how long you wait. What does that mean? I want to share this. What it means is, are you waiting on Mr. or Mrs. Wright? Are you waiting on, uh, you know, to get pregnant? Are you waiting on the, sick, the, the medicine to kick in? Are you waiting on the promotion to happen? Are you waiting on the big check to clear, the big deal to go through? Are you waiting with a sense of anxiety, with a sense of disbelief, with a sense of it's not going to happen? Are you waiting with anxiety, anger, frustration, doubt? How are you waiting? Write that down. How are you waiting? What's your disposition while you're waiting? What is your disposition while you're waiting? For those of you running your network marketing businesses, waiting for your, for your promotion, striving to promote to get to the next rank, how are you waiting? Again, how you wait will determine how long you wait. How you wait will determine how long you wait. You know, many of you have heard me say before that believing takes work. When I say that, let me define what I mean by that. When I say believing takes work, because there you are, little bitty seed, and you're waiting. You're waiting. You're waiting for your harvest. You're waiting for your ship to come in. You're waiting for maturity to take place. You're waiting for it to happen. You're waiting. And when I say that believing takes work, what that means is you are believing that one day it's going to happen. And the work part, ladies and gentlemen, is the dash. The dash between the moment you plant the seed, and if we, were to, if we were to think in terms of farmers, the moment you plant the seed for potatoes and the manifestation of a potato, that's the work. The, all the days in between, that's the work process. That's the work process. You watering the soil, you watering that seed when you can't see no potato underground. You watering, protecting, sheltering, nurturing that seed when you can't see it is the work process. Well, the same thing has to do with the manifestation of your new vehicle, of your new family, of your new promotion, of your new business, of your new rank. The same thing has to happen. You've got to water it. You've got to protect it. You've got to nurture it. And so when I say that believing takes work, there's going to be a fight. Well, you know what? I watered it on Tuesday. I really don't need to do it on Wednesday, you know. It really probably won't hurt if I take a week off from watering it. It's, it's got to go through its growth. It's, go, it's going to take time anyway. So if I take two weeks off from watering it, it, it probably won't be no big deal. Right? This is sometimes, I don't, well, you know, I'm tired. I, I really don't want to do it today. I really don't want to believe in my goal, believe in my dream. I, I really don't want to, I, I don't want to do all that stuff today. I don't want to read my affirmations. I don't want to, I don't want to, I just don't want to. I'm tired. 
I don't want to do all that. Believing takes work, ladies and gentlemen. It takes work. It takes work. And what I want to remind you is the way that you wait, it will determine how long you wait. And so what we want to do is while you're waiting, guys, you want to make sure that you check your disposition. Expectation is the proof of faith. God is just looking for somebody to believe in his principles. He's looking for somebody to believe that his word does not lie. He's looking for somebody to believe in the promises that his word that his word says for all men and women. He's looking for someone to believe in what his word says, for his word does not lie. And I'm telling you, it's not easy to believe. It takes work to believe. It does. And that's why the scripture talks about all things are possible to those that what? Believe. You see, many of us, we've all heard that, you know, we've all heard it been said that God spoke and he said, let there be light. And so it, let there be light, let there be light. And so it was. I want to underline and circle the word and. Let there be light and. Circle the word and on your paperwork, please. Let there be light and. So it was. Circle the word and. See, we don't know if the and took place the next day or if it was 20 days, 30 days, 100 years later before light showed up. We don't know. The Bible does not specify. It doesn't tell us how long was the wait. We don't know. All we know is that he spoke it and it came to pass. But I want to challenge each and every single one of us. Circle the word and, A-N-D. Hold it right there. Stop right there. Once again, circle the word and. How long do we have to wait? How long do we have to wait? See, we don't know this part, but we do know it's going to happen. And what I want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, is some of the tricks of the enemy. The enemy's job is to come in and to create distraction. The enemy's job is to create massive confusion in your mind to make you think you're unworthy, to make you think it's not going to happen, to make you think, uh, you know, you haven't been living perfect, so there's no way in hell you deserve to be blessed like that. This is what the enemy wants to do to you. He wants you to believe that, wait a minute, you ain't got all your ducks in a row, so no way do you deserve to prosper like that. No way do you deserve to have a husband like that. No, no, no. This is what the enemy's job is, to distract you and to make you feel unworthy, to to get you to believe you ain't got it, you're still short, you need to work on this, you need to work on that. It's not going to happen for you. See, that's what the enemy wants to do. It wants to distract you from believing that it will come to pass. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, yes, believing takes work. Yes, yes it, takes, it, it, yes, it takes work. You've got to open your mouth and speak on it. You've got to open your mouth and keep declaring it. You've got to open your mouth and keep praying for it. You've got to open your mouth and keep working for it. And you've got to put some, what the old folks used to say, some elbow grease behind it. That's right. You're going to have to put your feet. You're going to have to put your physical work behind what it is you're believing for. You're going to have to activate that faith. You're going to have to move towards what you want. Absolutely. But our God that we serve, guys, his grace and his mercy is everlasting. Oh, man, if there's ever, if there's ever something that I love about God, I can tell you it's his grace and his mercy. His gra- In other words, his grace and his mercy is sufficient 
See, some, see, by your own natural standards, you believe maybe you're not enough. Maybe you need to do more. Maybe uh, I'll take that, but wait a minute, that's too big for me. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't feel deserving of something. For whatever the reasons may be. But I stand to tell you that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. But what is true, how you wait will determine how long you wait. And ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be a massive, listen to me, write this down. There's going to be a massive fight in your mind while you're waiting. What am I talking about? There you are waiting on your husband to finally start acting right. There you are waiting on your wife to finally come into the woman of your dreams and begin to make the meals that you just love to eat, but she's not a good cook. There you are waiting on, 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 on a child who's got uh, some, 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 some bad energy flowing through him for the last several years, but you're waiting for him to get it right. How you wait is going to determine how long you wait. How you wait speaks to the attitude of what's going on inside of you while waiting. Have you lowered your expectations? Have you succumbed to the disbelief that it will not happen? How you wait, ladies and gentlemen, is everything. And the Bible gives us advice on this too. It tells us exactly how to wait. It tells us what to do while waiting. And I'm going to bring on in future calls here the next week or two some experts that not are just going to tell you what the word says. I want to bring on some people that I know personally and I've watched them wait. I've watched them wait on this and I've watched them wait on that. And I've watched them wait on and they, again I want to hear their wisdom of what can you share with us when we know that this is our season. We know this is our time right now. We know it is. But even though it's your time right now, even though this is your season right now, you're still patiently waiting for it to happen. You're waiting for the manifestation to actually catch up to your expectations. One more time. You're waiting for the manifestation to catch up to your expectations. What do you do during that time period? What do you do when there's no money but you know you're getting ready to get hit with a huge windfall of money? What do you do? When you know you're, you're so close to the promotion, you can smell it. You're doing all the right things. But, it, but, but you still haven't gotten that recognition just yet that you've now achieved that new rank. What do you do? What do you do? Again, I submit to all of you that how you wait will clearly determine how you wait. How you wait will determine how long you wait. And I can tell you that my advice to you from what I know is always wait with joy in your heart. Always wait, expecting God to do it. He's going to do it. It may not happen. Remember, God doesn't move on your time or my time. Don't forget what the word says. A thousand years is nothing but ten minutes to God. A thousand years is ten minutes to God. So God doesn't move in terms of your time or my time, but again, the way you wait, do you still have joy in your heart? Are you still believing? Are you still knowing, even while crying, knowing it's going to happen? See, I want you to think about that, whatever that last thing that was really tough that you went through, whatever it was, I don't know what it was, but look at you now, you're on the other side. So in other words, it did happen. You did get through it. It did, it did. You did get past it. But the way you wait, it's everything. Are you still waiting with a smile on your face? Are you still waiting knowing it's going to happen? It has no choice but to happen. Are you still acting like it's going to happen, talking like it's going to happen, thinking like it's going to happen, preparing like it's going to happen? Or have you just given up? And I'm telling you guys, I know every day is a fight. Don't, don't let my voice confuse you. Every day is a fight. It's called everybody's fighting the good fight. Every day is a fight. But I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that how you wait, it will determine how long you have to wait. 
So if you're waiting with malice in your heart, anger, venom, frustration, doubt, it's not going to happen. It's going to take you so long because the energy that you're, your frequency, the energy that you're giving off is an energy of doubt, is an energy of it's not going to happen. God is not Santa Claus. He's not Santa Claus. God responds to the measure of your faith. Write that down. He responds to the measure of your faith. Now, all of us are going to have to go through pain. Everybody, pain is a part of the process. Pain is a part of the process. How do we know? Galatians 5, it teaches us about the fruit of the Spirit. And long-suffering is one of them. Galatians 5 teaches us about the fruit of the Spirit and long-suffering, no matter who you are, no matter what race or gender or what you believe, pain is a part of God's evolution process. Period. Drop the mic. So all of us are going to have to endure some pain. That's why you shouldn't laugh at your neighbors. You shouldn't laugh at your brothers and sisters when they're going through stuff. Because today it could be them going through it, and guess what? Tomorrow it could be you. But pain is a part of the process. And so when I say how you wait will determine how long you have to wait, I'm speaking to the attitude while you're waiting. What's your attitude like while waiting? Even though you may not have it today, do you truly know in your knower, do you truly believe that you know it's going to happen? And, I, and the answer for me is yes. At 1,000% yes, I know what's going to happen. Because he did it before. He did it before that. He did it before that. He did it before that. He did it over there. He did it over there. He did it for him. He did it for her. He did it for them. He did it for him. He did it for that person. I know he's going to do it for me. Now you say, well, what are you supposed to do, Ramacio? You do all you can. You do everything you know to do. You do everything you can. Yes, you do have to work. Yes, you do have to believe. Yes, you do have to speak upon your destiny. Speak upon your promotion. Speak upon your family. Speak into your children. Yes, you do. Yes, you're going to have to open your mouth. Why? Because that's how it works. That's just how it works. God spoke. And when God created us, he created us in his image. So he gave us the same powers that he has. But if you don't know how to use the power, then guess what? You're going to be powerless. You've got to know how to use the power. And he teaches us how to wait. He teaches us there's beauty in waiting. I know it don't seem like it. I know it don't because we want everything right now, and I can attest to that. We want everything right now. But see, God's thoughts are so much higher than ours, so much bigger than ours. And sometimes uh, if we were to hurry something up that wasn't quite ready for us, it opens up a whole other mess that we knew nothing about. And I can tell you firsthand how I've gotten myself into some hot grease by trying to speed something up that wasn't ready for me. But I wanted it so bad, so I had to have it. I couldn't wait. I ran through all the red lights. <laughs> I ran through every red light. Just had to have it. Only to realize what a huge mess it came with. I had no idea. Only to think to myself, wow. Maybe I should have waited <laughs> until it was time. So, again, I, I just want you to understand that patience is real. We all are waiting for something. But my perspective today is I want to really just drive in on how you wait. It will determine how long you have to wait. And so I want you to check your HOW. I want you to check your how. How are you waiting for whatever it is you're waiting for right now? Honestly, we're talking the truth here today. 
How are you waiting? Are you waiting with sadness, depression, anxiety, frustration, anger? Has your expectations decreased? Uh, it may happen. I don't know. It might happen. Who knows? Who knows? It may happen. I'm not sure. I don't know. I really don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not judging you, but I'm telling you to get back in the fight. Get back in the fight. Get back in the fight. Increase your level of expectations. Increase your attitude. Increase your joy. Increase your giving. Increase your frequencies. Get out of the basement and get your energy level to the penthouse. Get out of the basement of depression and anger and frustration and and judgment, envy. Get out of the basement and get to the penthouse where you know what's going to happen. It has to happen. He said it would happen for you. See, this is what I mean when I say believing takes work. See, it doesn't take any work to say I'm a loser. I quit. It's over. I'm done. I'm finished. No work. See, it requires no energy, no effort to say it's over. I quit. My health quits. My finances quit. My relationship quit. Everything just, I'm a zombie. I'm, I'm, I'm alive, but I'm really dead inside. It takes no work to do that. But it takes a tremendous amount of work to believe that it is going to happen. And then to support that belief with you repeating God's word back to him. Now, that takes a lot of work because you've got to go first look up the scripture that talks about your situation of divorce, your situation of, you know, maybe maybe you're an adulterer, you know, your situation of maybe you're dealing with drugs, maybe you're dealing with, you know, anger, anxiety, your situation of depression, your situation of maybe, you, I don't know, of gluttony. Whatever your situation is, go and look up that scripture. Hold that scripture deep inside of you. Repeat that scripture out loud in the mirror that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It didn't say that the weapons won't form. Oh, yes, they will. But it said that they will not prosper. It didn't say that they're not going to that it's not going to happen. That, they, that they're not, that they're not going to form. Yes, they're going to form. Adversities are coming your way. But it said that they won't prosper. In other words, what the enemy meant for, but what the enemy meant for bad, God will turn that and use it for good. This is all scripture. So what I'm saying is, how you wait is going to determine how long you wait. And yes, there are physical things that you can do to put yourself in a state of positive expectancy. Write that word down, please. Positive expectancy. There are things that you can do while waiting. Absolutely. And one of the things that I love to share with you is act as if, act as if it's already happened. Act as if you know you closed the deal. Act as if you know it's happened. See, a lot of people say, wait a minute, you put the cart before the horse, you shouldn't be doing it. You say, no, no, stop, stop. If you have nothing to hope for, nothing to dream upon, nothing, listen, everything in your life, preparation comes first. When the babies and when, when the kids tell you they're hungry, guess what you got to do? You got to go prepare the food. When you're getting ready to go to the doctor, go into surgery, guess what they do? They prepare the room. When you go into the dental office, guess what they do? They prepare the room. When you get ready to go to have church and when you, when you get ready to take, take up offering, they get prepared. Every morning you wake up, you prepare yourself. That's right. You've got to prepare yourself to walk into your season. You've got to prepare yourself for your dream to happen. You've got to prepare yourself for Mr. and Mrs. Wright. You've got to pre- get yourself prepared. Absolutely. Absolutely. Positive expectancy. 
I'm expecting this thing to happen. So when it happened, it ain't no surprise. Been waiting on you. Been wa- I knew it was going to happen. That's why I got prepared. I was ready. Positive expectancy, ladies and gentlemen. There are things you can do to show God that, yes, I truly believe in. I, I truly know what's going to happen. There are things that you can do. And so what I want to do is I want to bring on, real quickly, I want to bring on uh, a special guest here, somebody I know really well. This is my younger brother. Uh, some of you know who he is. Some of you don't. His name is Rashawn, F- Rashawn Fulcher. He's a uh, fire captain here in Sacramento, someone I have a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for. Basically, everything I'm not, he is. And so between he and I, you know, you got the best of the best for sure. And so I want to bring him on really quickly, a very sharp young man, someone, as I said, I respect, just to kind of share some perspective about this topic of patience. And as we talked about uh, waiting, how you wait will determine how long you have to wait. Hey, Mr. Rashawn Fulcher, are you on the line with us today? I'm on the line. Can you hear me well or no? We can, we can barely hear you. Can, you. can you speak up for me? Yes, let me switch out the headphones connection. How about now? Is that better? That's certainly much better. Well, thank okay, you for thanks. jumping in with us. We appreciate that. Oh, no, it's been a pleasure, man. I'm listening to the call. It's amazing. Everything you say is, is, is on point. It's spot on. Well, tell us, what would you add to this? What's your perspective about waiting, about patience, and as it relates to the different contexts that we threw out here today? What would you add or what's, what's your, what's your, give, us, give us your perspective on this? One thing I heard you say that I would add is the way you receive a thing has everything to do with the way you prepare for it. Now, I'm going to let that soak for a minute. The way you receive a thing has everything to do with the way you prepare for it. So, for example, let's take a wedding. We start talking about patience. The groom is standing at the altar. The guests have assembled themselves. Why? Because you sent out invitations in advance for an expected date, an expected end. And so they begin to play the music. Why? Because the bride is expecting to walk down there. So you stand to attention. Why? Because you prepared to receive a thing. And see, when you haven't prepared, like everything you just talked about, or what's your mood? What's your disposition? Are you depressed? Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you mad? Have you given up? That talks about how you expect to receive a thing. So if you are expecting nothing, if you're preparing for nothing, don't be disappointed when nothing shows up. Now, back to the bride analogy. The reason why everybody's standing at attention and standing up and is excited is because they know the, the bride is coming. The way they receive that thing is because they prepared for it. So to go back to what you were talking about, ask yourself, how am I prepared to receive? How am I prepared to receive? Another example. When you are shocked when somebody walks through the door because you didn't know they were coming, you weren't prepared to receive them. That's why you say, call me before you come so I can get ready. So if you look at your dreams, your goals, your expectations as an appointment for a later date that you must be ready for, ask yourself, is the table set? Are the dishes clean? Is the house ready? Are you on time? Because I've been told your dreams are an appointment that you must make. But if you fail to prepare and be ready, they'll pass you by. They will pass you by. So when you start talking about patience, patience can be deceiving because we some people hear the word patience and go, I just sit and wait. That's incorrect. The only reason you're giving patience is so you can prepare. That's why the Bible says, Jesus said, I'm going to go off and to prepare a place for you. He didn't say, I'm going to be patient until you get there. He said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. So patience is like a time gap when you better be getting ready. Because like you said earlier, the one thing we cannot get back in reverse is time. So patience has everything to do with what are you doing with your time. One thing I noticed about successful people is they never get bored. Why? Because when they have time, they're preparing. They're preparing. They're preparing. They're not sulking. They're not getting depressed. They're not getting angry. They're not trying to get even. They're getting prepared. And you alluded to that earlier. 
preparing for an expected end. Now, here's the point about preparing for an expected end. It's never, never going to look like what you want it to look like until you get there. So when we talk about this time gap of preparing and being patient, you have to see it before it even arrives. And that's what you have to prepare for. That's what you have to prepare for. You can't prepare for the now because you can't see it. It's not there. So if you, if you gauge your actions on the now, you're not going to be ready. You're not going to be ready. I'll give you an example. You alluded to me being in the fire service. I am. When we go out and go to fires and we get a 911 call, we have no idea what it's going to be until we get there. But we're prepared for the biggest and the baddest thing. So when we arrive, we're not taken by mistake, and we're also not half-stepping. So, again, if you have time, which you do, and you're being patient, you should be preparing. But you shouldn't be preparing for the things in the now. You should be preparing for the things in the future that you want. That's what I would add, bro. Man, boy, I, man, I, I'm just so happy. you my brother. I'm so happy that I got a brother I can call. Boy, boy, did, God, you hear how he laid that out? Man, you see what I'm saying? You see, everything I don't got, he got it. Man, that was so well said. Wow. That boy, did you, you didn't even know. And just to let you know, guys, that he didn't take no notes. He didn't even know he was going to be on the call until 10 minutes before. Had no idea. But he talked about preparation. That was absolutely phenomenal, Rashawn. I like that. That was good talk. That was really good talk. I needed to hear that. So the point, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, he's saying – that patience is basically like a time capsule are you, for you to prepare yourself. So how are you preparing yourself? That was absolutely phenomenal. Is there any more that you would add on to that, Rashawn? There's one other thing I would add, and this is almost if you want to go to, like, patience 201, the next level. The next level of patience is going to be how you deal with pain. Because patience is – I'll just make it simple. Let's talk layman's terms. It's easy to wake up on Monday and start your week and go, okay, I get it done. But why do they call Wednesday hump day? They call Wednesday hump day because you're in the middle. You've got to get over something. What is that that you have to get over? You have to get over the pain of it all. I remember when I went to a 10-day meditation sit. At day three, they called it the Anand Top. The Anand Top means the first two days, anybody can pretty much do it and sit there for hours on end because your energy, your adrenaline is high, your motivation is there, great. What happens when you get to the middle, day five? And now your back hurts, your legs hurt, your feet hurt, you're tired, your mind is drifting. That's why they called it the anantant, which is the painful sit, the painful sit. See, patience is easy Monday, Tuesday. When we get to the middle of the week and we got the bills coming and we got the creditors calling, we got the kids wanting this, we got the pressure of this, we got your friends saying, I thought you, it was going to come. Where's your payday? I thought this, I thought that. Now you got peer pressure coming. This is when it begins to mount the hill. This is hump day now. So when you get to patience 201, it's how you deal with pain. Because pain is going to come, it's going to distract you, it's going to diffuse you, it's going to make you feel beat down and wore out like you can't do it. But what it requires is more patience. And what we had to do in the 10-day sit was you had to learn to sit through it. I'm going to say that slowly. Because sometimes people see pain and they want to run. Every pain you ain't supposed to run from. You had to sit through it. My grandmother, used to tell, my, my grandmother used to tell me, there's a certain kind of wisdom that comes from stillness. I say it again. Ooh, I'm getting the shakes. There's a certain kind of wisdom that comes from stillness. Stillness. And what stillness represents is I'm prepared. I'm patient, but I'm hurting. I'm prepared. I'm patient, but I'm hurting. And everything else would tell me to move, but I'm going to stay right here. Why? Because my bride is coming. My bride is walking down the aisle. The music is playing and I'm hurting, but I'm going to stay right here. So that's patience 201 when you've done what you could. You've prepared like you should. You're sitting there and you go, it's hot. It's hurting. My feet hurt. And you feel like moving. That is your dreams and your goals saying to you one question. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Because I tell you, somebody's willing to wait for it. Somebody's willing to sit through that pain and sit there 
and sit there and wait and wait and wait and go, I'm preparing. Because when you're not preparing your skills, you're preparing your mind. You're preparing your mind. Now, I know you didn't talk on this, but I'm going to tell you real quick. There's things you do to prepare your skill set, your knowledge base, what you physically show up, what's tangible. And then there's things you do to prepare your mind, which nobody can see. Nobody can see. Some of the great athletes, what they do before a game is they sit and they get their mind ready. They're being patient, but they're preparing their mind. And so what the hard sit was about was preparing your mind, mind over matter. That's patience 201. When you've got all the skills, you've acquired all the pieces, and now you've got to sit still because it's hurting. It's hurting to stay in that place and wait. That's patience 201. You've got to be able to sit through the pain and still persevere. Man, boy, this is some heavy stuff. I'm so grateful that you came on and you're sharing this. I'm receiving every word. As I told you guys, I feel like this call is just for me. I feel like this is – I feel like I'm talking – to myself. I feel like I'm listening for myself. Even the best of the best, we all still need. We still have to learn how to keep preparing ourselves for what it is that we're expecting. And so, guys, I'm so grateful, Rashawn, that you came in and chimed in with that. And I'm looking forward to, as the weeks progresses, for you just taking on a full, a full call yourself to be able to, to train and to talk on this topic because I just think it's just so – I think it's so relative for everybody. I feel like we all are waiting on something but as we talk about how you wait, it does determine how long you'll have to wait. And so, guys, listen, that's all for today, but we really want you to uh, bookmark your calendar for next Sunday because I'm telling you, you're going to see this topic get deeper and deeper and deeper. And I believe, guys, there's a tremendous amount of meat here. There's a tremendous amount of meat here for each and every single one of you. Trust me, uh, we all are going through a very interesting time, and, again, how you go through it. Again, it's, it's all here. This is just this is preparation season. This is, you should be preparing yourself in a proper manner. And we want to help lay out specifically, clearly, what you can do, what you should be doing from both a physical standpoint and a spiritual standpoint and a mental standpoint, How, what that really looks like. And so my goal over the next several weeks is to really, really bring you some amazing experts uh, that I feel, people that I respect, that will come on and be, 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 uh, be able to give some strong wisdom about how, 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 ladies and gentlemen, how to exercise patience. Uh, because, again, it's not just sitting there that's going to be doing enough. That's not it. It's how you sit there. It's how you go through it. It's all the preparation stuff. So, again, thank you, Rashawn, for jumping on. But I'm looking forward to next week as well, guys. I'm telling you, this is just the first of a series called Patience. I can't wait. I can't wait to get to next week. Hey, listen, guys, as always, I'm the California kid, and as I always say, don't ever forget, in all that you do, there is nobody, nobody in the entire world any more important than you. Hey, listen, much love, and I'll see you guys all next Sunday. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye-bye.